The theme continues. So remember, we were in a low growth, low yield world, and in the low growth, low yield world, you bought technology stocks, anything that had growth. Now we're transitioning to a higher growth, higher yield world, and technology is out of favor. And it makes some sense. If you see what's been going on since last Wednesday, tech stocks in the NYSE, uh, in the uh, on the Dow Jones Industrial Average, Intel and Microsoft, uh, Cisco, Apple, they're all down three, four, five percent. There you see the numbers here. Remember, the, the S&P is down two, two and a half percent. The picture has gotten complicated because we're not just dealing with higher rates, we're dealing with weaker currencies and tariff issues, and that's killing the industrials. So we've got a second sector, show these industrials in the last couple of uh, days here, and you've got Boeing, Caterpillar, United Technologies, all 3M all down. We're debating whether or not value is going to come back. Should we go buy consumer staples now? That's been out of favor for a long time. And you see some of these uh, defensive names. Look, <laughs> these names are up here. So the market is acting in a rational way if you understand the transition low growth, low yield to higher growth, higher yield. I think uh, the market investors would be very comfortable with that. You make this uneasy piece with a higher threshold of yields if they were persuaded that the high growth was going to be sustainable. If the high growth yeah. continues into next year, 2019, that's what I think you're seeing here when you see housing, auto, material stocks, this idea that there's a little more friction in the world economy because of trade and currency stuff. I think that's what's uh, kind of knocking people back a little bit. Also, though, just context-wise, we've talked about this a lot. The S&P is now down almost 3% from its closing high. It seems like a catch down move to the average stock and to small cap stocks, which have been suffering quietly or less quietly recently with greater losses. So it seems like the market was a little bit imbalanced. You had big cap indexes, uh, the U.S. Uh, working when, when non U.S. was not working. All these things are, are getting readjusted a little bit here. And so, remember, you had market caps ridiculous on these yeah. stocks, on these tech stocks, and that really, well, yeah, that's so really Amazon's down 10 percent from when it touched a trillion. A viewer, yeah, a viewer this morning said we should have had a banner when Amazon fell below 900 billion. Yeah, <laughs> we didn't. But do that. Apple's still above a trillion. I, I don't know which bucket to really put that in. I mean, in a way, it's a tech stock, but uh, its valuation has never gotten that crazy. I mean, is is flattish the new down? I mean. We don't seem to be talking about corrections anymore when it comes to the major indices. Uh, it, it, it's hard to talk about a significant correction. I mean, we, we're talking like past 10 percent on the S&P when you've got an economy this strong. Right. I mean, look, we're going to have revenue growth of 7 percent this quarter. Eight. And we're in 7 percent into 2019. When you have revenue growth, you can talk about okay, the costs are higher, wage growth is up, and we've got tariff issues. But if your costs are going up 2 percent and your revenues are going up 7 or 8 percent, well, that's really going to help your margins. You can handle somewhat higher costs when revenues are going up 7 or 8 percent. And, Mike, that may be the ultimate savior here. If we can yeah. continue the strong revenue growth, this whole issue may become less important down the road.